Hello, and welcome to the tutorial manual of the Shala Foundation from the Anura 3D MPM Research Community. This has been documented in the tutorial manual, but this video will go over it in detail. The objective of this video is to learn how to simulate a shallow strip foundation using Anura 3D. We will also use a varying load multiplier. We will use the prescribed velocity feature and the moving mesh feature and plot solar reaction forces due to an external load. The information in this tutorial video is described in detail in chapter seven of the tutorial manual. Please feel free to refer to that manual. We will now describe the problem definition of the shallow foundation problem. On the left, we present the geometry that we chose for the shallow foundation problem. And on the right, we have the values of each dimension. For convenience, I've summarized nine points with the X coordinate and Y coordinate, which can be conveniently used to input that into your preprocessor to generate the drawing and subsequently the mesh and the information needed to run Anura 3D. We will now create the input data using GED. The preprocessor will allow us to draw and we can select the line feature to input the nine points to draw the geometry of the shallow foundation problem. As you can see, I am typing in the points and each of the nine points will generate a point and it will connect the lines As the lines connect, we see, we, we see the geometry in a better manner. And now it will sometimes ask us to join points. And this is useful to make sure that we have generated a closed drawing so that we can use the NURBS feature in GED to generate surfaces, as you can see in the tutorial video. Now we will create the materials. We need two materials for the foundation and the soil. We are creating a foundation material with a corresponding initial porosity, density, and K-naught value. We also chose the near elasticity constitutive model for the foundation, as you can see. We will assign it to the foundation surface. Now we will create the soil material. Similarly, we specify the initial porosity and density for this dry material. In addition, we will choose the Mar Coulomb and we will modify the strength parameters to our, to our convenience. We will specify that for the soil surface and we will check that it has been assigned correctly. Now it's time to choose how many material points to need for each material. We will choose three material points for both the foundation and the soil, as you can see. We will now perform the fixities. The base is fixed in the x and y directions, and the size is fixed in the x direction. The top of the model is fixed in the y direction. We will use the color feature to check we've implemented things correctly. After we specify the fixities, we have to specify the loading condition for the using the traction, uh, solid traction, two-dimensional solid traction. And we can specify um, a negative 100 kPa in the y direction across the top of the footing as a loading mechanism. We can also specify a prescribed velocity for a strain control type of loading. We can put negative 0.1 meter per second and assign it to the surface of the footing, as you can see. After we specified the prescribed velocity, we can now select surface to track the reaction. We will choose the reaction, which is the interface line between the footing and the soil material. And we uh, named the line as surface so that we can identify it. We can now assign the moving mesh to the part of the footing, to, to the part above the soil. And below the soil, we can assign the compre compressing mesh. We can choose the reference material to be the footing, as you can see. Now we've specified the moving mesh and it's time to look into the calculation data. We can choose 2D plane strain. 
And for the first approach, we will use the external load and we will use load multipliers to activate the traction. We will specify six loading steps and we will apply the gravity. We will also specify uh, stepwise solid traction and we will specify the convergence criteria. We also applied the KNOT procedure Now it's time to generate the computational mesh. We can choose the mesh tab and create, generate a mesh with an element size of 0.5 meters. This is the mesh that we generated. Now it's time to generate an Earth 3D file. We can go to an Earth 3D tab and choose generate an Earth 3D files. After we've generated an Earth 3D files, we can perform the calculation by clicking on the calculate.bat file. This is a batch file, which will prompt a command uh, window, and you will see the calculation of the load steps one by one. We're currently going through the NPM um, computation, and you can see live uh, the variation of load steps within the computation to see the progress of your simulation. Now we will reach load step number six which is the final load step. After this is done, the simulation calculation is complete. Now we can visualize the results. We will primarily use ParaView as a tool to visualize the contour plot of the displacement. We can see the displacement solid magnitude and we can see the variation of displacement below the footing. We can also investigate the rsurf file, which shows us the reaction variation with time. We can also see that for material number one, material number two. And we can also see each time step and load step for better understanding of the simulation. We can also plot that, as you will see. As you can see, we can plot the variation of the reaction with time and for each load step. We see that the reaction force for the soil and the foundation is identical with them being only opposite in sign but equal in magnitude, which is consistent with the um, stepwise traction that we specified in the preprocessor calculation tab. We can also use a different approach using the prescribed velocity. We can modify that in the preprocessor, and I will save as uh, and choose and generate a new file so that we can modify and generate a different NORA 3D file. We will change the calculation number of steps and time per calculation step to better visualize the solution. We will use the prescribed velocity feature and we will assign identical initial and final value. We will also remove the local damping and we will remove the quasi-static convergence. We can now, in a similar manner, generate the NURA 3D files. And once we generate the NURA 3D files, we can visualize the solution for each load step. I'm now presenting the velocity solid in the Y direction. For each load step, we can see a contour plot and we can see how the velocity in the Y direction is varying below the footing. Finally, the lessons learned in this video. We learned how to model a shallow foundation problem, and we also used load and prescribed velocity multipliers. We also learned how to use the moving mesh feature, and we visualized the results using ParaView. Thank you very much for your kind attention.